Now, through, t t through two of those is excluded because then we don't change Q. So Q, the new Q has to go through the old E. And through one of those three. Now, uh, the one it goes th through is, uh, I will call, and now I'll, now I'll rub it out, I will call A. I'm free in the naming here. So the new value of Q becomes uh, the line E A. And now I must yeah. So uh, now I rub this out again. I'm going to make, make a new picture. This is Q, and this is E. And I've put an A here, and this will be my new Q. Yeah. Now, the existence of E has been used to show the possibility of introducing E and keeping this second term of the invariant invariant. Now we have to think about a termination argument. Now listen, in the original statement of the theorem, we have a finite number of points. This means that uh, our state space that consists of a Q and an E has a finite number of possible values. There's a finite number of values, possible values for Q, and the, for each value of Q there is a finite possible number of, of values for E. And it is in this finite space that we have to find a termination argument. How do we find a termination argument? Well, the standard way is that you define an, a natural function on the state space which in each step of the repetition is decreased by at least one. Uh, however, since our space consists of a finite number of states, uh, we can drop the constraint of the, the variant function being integer. It suffices to define an integer value, an integer function of the state of which subsequently we can prove that uh, it's bounded from below and decreases in each step. Now, our current state always exists of a line Q and a point E not on that line. Can anybody think of a real function of a point and a line that is bounded from below? The Euclidean distance, yes, thank you very much. So, but if we do take the Euclidean distance, then I know which of the other two, B and C, will be taken as our new E. The choice that minimizes the distance to the new Q as much as possible. So here we put of B and C the nearest to our new Q. And now, uh, of the six possibilities that we had here, there are still three left, and that is in the choice of capital A. 
because the choice of which new point has been settled by this. So now our only obligation is to see to it, to prove, possibly by resolving the remaining uh, non-determinacy, that our algorithm terminates. That is, that the distance from E to Q actually decreases. So here we are, this was our old or old E and this was our old Q and we call this distance H and well B is somewhere the new distance the distance from B to the new Q is that and I call that little b uh, and I will do the same for capital C which has a distance little c to the new Q only I don't make that drawing because that invokes a case analysis uh, uh, because then there are all sorts of places where c might lie and I'm not going to do that my proof obligation for the termination is that I can demonstrate that the, the minimum of b, little b and little c is actually less than h. And if I can show that, I have satisfied my proof obligation means that the distance from E to Q will actually decrease in each step. Now, I have to show this. I'm going to simplify that. The very first thing is that I wish to eliminate the operator that takes the minimum. So, without changing the value of this Boolean expression, I wish to eliminate the minimum function. Uh, and the minimum of B and C. Less than H is according to the rules of my game that B is less than H or C is less than H. Everybody agrees? Huh? No sir, because in for the termination argument I need actual decrease. So the minimum of these of, of this, if this value has to be less than H, then B yeah, is less than, than, than B is less than H or C is less than H. And this is an equivalence because uh, uh, these two Boolean expressions have the same value. Now, uh, The next thing I wish to do is to eliminate the lowercase letters. 